barbecue to a pursuit ends in tragedy. Our policy is just BPD policy. It has nothing to do with Yellowstone County, Laurel, Highway Patrol. An innocent motorcycle rider is dead after being struck by a truck fleeing deputies. Plus, I'm Alina Howder. After one Billings man's electric bike was stolen, he's now turning to the community. Find out more coming up. And taking center stage. I really would like to see what both candidates are able to bring to a public stage directly addressing our nation. The top two candidates for the White House set to square off in their first presidential debate. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Liu. It's the latest tonight on a deadly crash that shut down a busy Billings intersection for hours overnight. Billings police are now investigating a high speed pursuit by a fellow agency that eventually left a man dead in the middle of the road. Court documents say the crash happened at roughly 845 after a 15 minute pursuit of a truck carrying a trailer and stolen skid steer. But the pursuing agency was not Billings police. It was the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office charging documents say the suspect Jimmy Joe Flanagan was first seen on the interstate before exiting through Lockwood. The pursuit continued with the trailer and skid steer eventually breaking off from the truck near Metro Park and tipping over. At one point, Flanagan drove the wrong way before crossing 4th Avenue North and striking and killing that motorcyclist. Now the crash is bringing up some questions over policies on pursuits for neighboring agencies. Our policy is just BPD policy. It has nothing to do with Yellowstone County, Laurel, Highway Patrol. They all have their own policies. So really it's a restricted pursuit policy. Um, it's not that we don't uh, because there are times where it's appropriate uh, and or necessary. When necessary, Billings police say they will pursue a suspect, but the circumstance and criteria to do so must align. It did happen overnight Saturday when a man described as a career criminal and an extreme threat so dangerous he's wanted on a $1 million bond. 47 year old Robert Canali is charged with numerous felony crimes in connection to a months long domestic violence case against his former 27 year old girlfriend. It eventually culminated in late August with the abduction of her at gunpoint. Following that kidnapping, prosecutors say Canali avoided capture until Saturday when officers located his vehicle. He then fled from officers, reaching speeds of 100 miles an hour before dumping his car and being arrested in a field near Central Avenue. Canali is a registered violent offender with eight prior felony convictions, including in California in the late 1990s for rape. Billings police are also on the lookout for a suspect considered armed and dangerous after a stabbing near Grand Avenue and First Street West this afternoon. Police say a 43 year old woman was stabbed in her stomach by 21 year old Isaiah Bosick. Bosick then fled the scene, has not been located since. He's described as Native American, about six feet tall and 170 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes, was last seen black, wearing black shorts and black socks, that is. The victim was taken to the hospital with serious but non life threatening injuries. Juggling work in college courses is hard enough when you're living on a fixed income, but take away your means of transportation and it becomes an even tougher situation. That's what happened to a Billings man last week after someone stole his e bike. As our Alina Howder explains, the e bike thefts in our community are more common than we might realize. The Army veteran doesn't have a driver's license, so that electric bike means everything to Napoleon Clayton. He's now turning to the community for help. Napoleon Clayton holds many titles. No. Veteran, student, employee. I feel like I'm actually helping contribute to something, you know, instead of just doing a job. But a gut-wrenching incident last Thursday during his shift at Billings Clinic has put a hitch in his master plan. It was rough the night I walked out and saw it going. I was like, oh man, that's... A lot of money that just walked away. Someone cut the lock off his only means of transportation, a $2,500 electric bike with custom parts. It was more than just my everyday transportation and my to and from. It was, it was really a piece of my freedom. He filed a police report and notified pawn shops as Napoleon's sister, Shay Farnsworth, went to work chasing her own leads on social media. The outpouring that I've gotten has been quite overwhelming and we truly appreciate it. Community members left and right have messaged Shay with sightings of a man riding Napoleon's bike near Broadway and Division. I would take those messages and I'd 
you know, someone would message me, oh, I seen it, he's down here at, you know, such and such intersection. I would immediately get in my truck and drive down there. And by the time I got down there, he's gone. Billings police say as e-bikes become more popular, so do e-bike thefts. There were at least 18 last year in the city and 11 so far this year. Napoleon believes the bike is most likely dead at this point, which doesn't help anybody. I guess I'm going to try and get a bus pass or I'm going to see if my sister can give me a ride, get rides where I can. Um, um, that, that kind of deal because I don't I, I don't have anything else otherwise. Unfortunately, he's not alone. Everybody seems to have a story about something going on here in Billings where they're like, yeah, I had this go missing or I had somebody try to break into my home. You know what I mean? So it's been very heartwarming to have the community reach out and help um, and, and know that, you know, when stuff like this happens, that we're all in this situation together. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. The Smucker Fire burning on Mount Maurice near Red Lodge is now 100% contained. That fire was first reported 13 days ago by a person near the Montana Wyoming border saying that they saw lightning and then a puff of smoke. But rain from that storm helped quiet the flames. Two infrared flights failed to pick up heat from the fire, but it was re-sparked yesterday in the hot, dry, and windy conditions. Three Beartooth Ranger District firefighters will remain on the fire today until it's completely extinguished. Red Lodge Fire Rescue says the name of the fire came from an old mining claim in the area. Smoke has been a concern across the region and it's been fluctuating throughout the day. We're still looking at unhealthy air quality in areas anywhere from Hamilton down towards Dillon, where at times it's been up into the hazardous category. For Billings, things have eased up into the moderate category this afternoon, but still looking at a few areas here into southeastern Montana where the smoke is a concern. So we have smoke advisories into effect now into areas of southwest Montana and northern Wyoming. But how about a shift in the weather pattern here as we get into the next 24 hours. Suddenly we're looking at winter weather advisories for the mountain passes of southwest Montana. A lot of weather to talk about coming up with a forecast. The stage is set in Philadelphia and the race to the White House is officially full steam ahead. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump meeting for the first time tonight. Natalie Brandt has the latest this evening. The stage is now set for the first face-off and meeting between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. The debate taking place in the hotly contested battleground state of Pennsylvania, where voters will be closely watching. What are you expecting from this debate? I'm expecting, hopefully, answers. I really would like to see what both candidates are able to bring to a public stage directly addressing our nation. And with Harris only recently becoming the Democratic nominee, voters say they want to hear more about her policy proposals. Tony DiULio, an independent, says he will be listening for substance and style. Really what's important is somebody that can articulate their ideas, listen, respond well. I, I want to see civility. Uh, that's one of the things I feel like we've been missing a lot of recently. On Capitol Hill, Trump allies advised him to steer clear of personal attacks. I think President Trump would be wise to explain how he would change the country, stay away from the personal stuff, talk about policy differences. Democratic leaders expect Harris will lean into her experience as a prosecutor to go after Trump and detail differences between the two. A stark contrast in, uh, in two candidates. Uh, one who's a seasoned prosecutor who who's going to make her case and, and one who is a felon. The 90 minute debate will have no studio audience. Candidates are not allowed pre-written notes on stage and microphones will be muted when it's not their turn to speak. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Philadelphia. And you can watch that debate tonight right here on Q2. Coverage starts at 7 as the path to the White House heats up. <laughs> Vice President Harris says former President Trump wants to end the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. It's a decision that would impact millions of Americans, but does that claim even check out? Patrick Terpstra has the answer in tonight's Truth Be Told. What would former President Donald Trump do with the Affordable Care Act if elected to another term? Truth Be Told looks at a frequent claim by Vice President Kamala Harris that Trump would get rid of the law. If Donald Trump were to win in November, he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. 
He intends to end the Affordable Care Act. Former President Donald Trump has a long history of opposing the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, which now provides health coverage to a record 21 million Americans. While in office, when the law was less popular than it is now, Trump and fellow Republicans repeatedly tried and failed to dismantle President Obama's signature legislative achievement. Trump still has no love for Obamacare. It stinks. It's not good. Last December, he pledged on his social media platform to come up with a much better and less expensive alternative to the Affordable Care Act. Then, in a video posted in April, he backtracked, saying he would preserve the law unless he can improve it, a line he repeats on the campaign trail. I'm going to keep the Affordable Care Act unless we can do something much better. We'll keep it. She goes around saying, hey, well, he's going to get rid of the, the health. No, no, I'm going to keep it unless we can come up with something that's better for you and less expensive for you. Trump has never provided specifics about the changes he would make. We rate the claim that Trump intends to end the Affordable Care Act as mostly false. Truth be told, after years of trying to repeal the law, Trump now says he would keep it while trying to make it better, but he hasn't presented any details on what specifically he'd do. Our next focus will be on the claims made this week by Harris and Trump during the debate. For Truth Be Told, I'm Patrick Terpstra. Organizations serving older Montanans and those with disabilities say the groups they work with are important demographics in the state. They're encouraging candidates in this year's election to pay attention to their priorities. MTN's Jonathan Anberian takes a closer look at two recent surveys outlining some of the issues important to these voters. Advocates say people over the age of 50 have made up well over half of Montana voters in recent elections and that a sizable percentage of Montanans are living with disabilities. They're hopeful that during this year's elections, those groups' voices will be heard. These candidates are recognizing these issues as big issues and they understand that the disability community is large and has a huge impact on shaping policies. Candidates would be very, very wise to listen to the issues and concerns of the 50 plus if they want to win in November. Last week, AARP Montana released a survey conducted by a bipartisan polling firm. In addition to voters' preferences in political races, it also laid out top priorities for voters 50 and older. Many pointed to issues like immigration and inflation, but Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, and property taxes also stood out. AARP Montana State Director Tim Summers says Social Security has been even more top of mind in Montana than other states they've polled. Look, we're a rural state and so many of uh, Montanans 65 and older do rely on their Social Security and that is a big factor in their monthly considerations for prices, etc. And, and the amount they spend. Disability Rights Montana says 29% of Montanans report having disabilities, ranging from mobility challenges to hearing and vision to cognition, and 21% identify as having a mental illness. On Monday, they released a candidate survey. They asked the people they worked with to identify top issues, then narrowed them down to 10 questions on topics like Medicaid, accessible housing, healthcare disparities for Native Americans, and services for people with disabilities. This is a community who fills that politicians don't typically hear what their concerns are. And I think that's why there was so much participation from the community. We're now just over a month away from mail ballots going out to Montana voters and less than two months away from Election Day in November. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2, Mind Games. The Rams of Billing Central test their mental and physical skills on a daily basis as they look to remain a volleyball powerhouse. We'll hear from them in just a bit. But first, that smoke continues to fill the skies outside. It may be sticking around for a while. Ed has the latest with his full forecast right after this.